We are stories stitched with scars and love, draped into breaths of fabric, colored, pressed, starched, clots of moments quilted into human. I'm going to tell stories, stories for Africa, for Azania, for Kolega, for Maltole, for Tembelani, for Mtunzigazi, for Zanele, for Dalkolo, stories of people. They came to expand their nation under the guise of education. These men traveled treacherous seas, crossed barren lands to save the heathens, civilize our people. Babe pete ingwa desni milo me bovu nezbili be shumala ngu Christu. Bata tum shaba wetu basni busi bache. Sai funda le pape lo wasindi swamdom yam. On green fertile soil they settled built churches and erected crosses. They sold us milk from our cows, grain from our land, found diamonds in our mines and paid us to dig them up. Yeah. Yeah. We were civilized now. From Bantu stands to crowded hostels, we had bathed now, had salaries and wheels for transportation. Our roles had changed now, from community members to sources of exploitation. Sasinga maka bangogo, gota sifundi lengogu, bas kupes lali ni bas fagetolopini, sabashi oronda betu sangene majojomben. Wow, waputo ga umdomnya. I don't talk a lot in between. It's just because I speak better through poetry. Because my father fought for you. He gave himself to you. Instead of spending time with us, he lay on cement floors, behind bars, under beds, in wardrobes, behind dustbins for you. He forced my mother up and down from prisons to hospitals, to prisons, baby on back searching for him because of you. For you, my mother nursed, sold, sold, worked hard when he couldn't work for you, for us, because he worked for you. Because my uncle left his leg in Lusaka for you. Became a child with a gun in foreign bushes for you. His parents worried. My mother was raided, covered up, worked thrice as hard for you. Because Umagazi lay on London benches for you. My aunt got kicked out of school, left home, hidden in buckies, was locked up in dark cells, counting imaginary stars for you. She lost her love and buried her child in an unnamed grave for you. Even when you abandoned her across the oceans, she gave herself to you. Even when you tried to kill her, she served you in green and black, fist high, proud for you. So I expect more from you. I remember when we first saw your face. My mother sang for you. In long queues with ID books and skaftinas, she signed for you. Gave her voice to you, understood when Utata said it would take time. With her last sense, she supported you because you were the dream they had for us. So if for no other reason but for her, I expect more from you. More than you who doesn't even remember her name. Who doesn't appreciate that she still signs for you. Years later, neck high in bond and car installments, unable to buy groceries. 
Even when you took her husband, then tried to hijack his funeral. Even when you rub your theft in her face, she prays for you, gives to you, no longer expects from you. But I, I expect more from you. More than a limping uncle struggling to get your attention. Poor veteran, still holding on to dreams conjured up in Lusaka. Still believing all those years away from home will pay off someday. I expect more than umagazi ono nyanyayo because your taking never stops. Lifetimes later, unable to pay hospital bills while you flaunt blue label luxuries and parade yourselves on pedestals behind high walls and tinted windows. I expect more from you because as much as you gave to us, we gave to you. Always, with our lives and our limbs and our children, we gave for a dream you keep taking from us. With each cross you take, and all we get are broken promises, yeah. cheap t-shirts, or chow me on potbelly stages. We get raped by our fathers, our homes get broken into, and still your taking never stops. We have sung your praises. We have filled your stadia. We have devoted our lives to you. So damn it, I expect more from you. Love poems are difficult, so we write love in languages that we speak well. And I speak shoes. You may not believe it today, but I do. <laughs> you are my favorite pair of all-stars. An earthly shade of green, not quite a boot, custom made just for me. Perfect for any occasion. I can stand before presidents in you, survive rallies, take long walks, go dancing. You are my favorite pair of shoes. One night, I felt like dancing, too drunk to want to go home. You saved me from a club I had no business going to. I was so angry, regal in Umpaco's splendor. I really should have gone home that night. I remember when I was sick, everything hurt. All I wanted was you. Midwinter, just us, out somewhere, quiet, outside, poetry, definitely. But Umama wanted me to stay home, get better. So you remained hidden in my closet. Everyone thinks you're a passing phrase. Just another pair of shoes. Everyone knows how much I love shoes. All stars in particular. Never had green though. You are my first almost boot. Funny, this first thing. You and I have so many of those. Like the first time I truly felt loved. Standing naked in the middle of a taxi rank. All I had was you. No one saw me beyond the nudity. But you held my feet steady, even though I was scared, ready to run from corrective hands. I feel like I grew up in you. You carried me through juvenile tantrums, thought I had potential, made me believe again, my big girl shoes. Feels like going up mountains sometimes, chasing sunrise, not quite built for hiking, rocks and all. We just need to hang in there. You and me keep walking in my favorite pair of all stars. <laughs> A letter to my stolen sister. This is more prose than it is poetry, but it is important. My darling, 
It has been 183 days since you were stolen, and I have wept for you incessantly since, every day. I know this letter will not reach you today, or tomorrow even, but I pray in my heart that you will read it someday, because I believe you will be brought back home eventually. I have tried to write to you so many times, but what does one say to a stolen child? How do I comfort you or give you hope? Tell you that this will pass and you will survive. That you will come home and even there, you will survive. I want to tell you that I would search those forests barefoot for as long as it takes if it would help find you. Because we are the same, me and you. I am older and we are separated by mountains and rivers and forests and a desert even, but we are the same. We are two black girl pawns on different chessboards in the same tournament. Our lives are statements, objects. We exist to be taken from the grocery store, from our schools, from our beds. Our bodies do not belong to us. The world remained silent for what must have been a lifetime to you when you were taken. No one but Umama wept for you. And then there was noise, anger all over cyberspace. Voices from every corner of the globe sent out virtual search parties for you. But we know the truth about this virtual world, me and you. We know that hashtags don't bring girls home. In my head, there are no politics, no ideologies. I don't care about fundamentalists or bureaucracy. Right now, I don't even care about the politics of silence. All I care about is you and having you home. The world does not know who you are. You are described only as black and girl and gone. But I have known you my whole life. I have seen your dreams. This is not how I wanted to find out how strong you are. In you being taken, you represent generations of black girl worth. Generations of black girl who grows up to be black woman worth. Every day you stay alive is so much more than we have any right to ask of you. Every breath you take is a miracle testimony of divinity. My darling, you are my hero, but I need you to be brought back home now. And when you are home, we will speak of this silence and this noise and this silence again. We will start conversations about liberation and guerrilla camps, movements with rape camps. We will discuss religion and education and the politics of always coming up short and how our bodies are constant battlefields when you are home. I'm scared of who you are now, who you have had to become to survive. You are losing faith, and we are failing you. Our letters, our hashtags, our public service announcements, none of them are bringing you home. Umama washes your uniform every day as though you were still here. She dishes up for you on some nights. No one sleeps in your bed. Everything is waiting for you to come home. Some truths are more difficult than others. I love the man who raped you, friend. There's no easy way to say it. 
Some stones are best left unturned. Secrets left untold. His words are best left unheard. He's dark. A bewitching mystery. Mommy telling me to stay away. I want to lose myself in his head. Explore his broken splendor. Ugly on a full moon is enchanting. Like the men who raped me. Nothing grotesque. I kissed him willingly even. Wished his tongue would fix my broken maybe. He tore me open, shared me with a friend. I remember, I wish he looked like a monster. A warning label on a box of cigarettes I would have known to stay away then. Someone calls him love. Someone knows him beautiful, makes lives of scars and blood-stained panties. Someone only knows his hands as holding. I love the man who raped you, friend. There's no easy way to say it. I wish I'd left that stone unturned, left that secret untold. His poems are best left unheard. And I would like to tell you a story because um, <laughs> anger and hurt are easy. Love is difficult. This last poem is called Grandfather's Garden and it's written in three parts. My grandfather was a walking man. A planting man said, every child deserves a garden. He spent his whole life preparing the soil on the southern tip of Earth's heart. He planted and watered, was gone for years at a time digging, tending to his garden. He named her Azania. When he passed, my grandfather wrote me a letter. It was 1994 in a rainbow colored envelope on the side of the bed. Stamped with the seal of the Freedom Charter, he wrote, My child, I leave you Azania to grow. Care for her. She will bring you many blessings. Water her. Turn her soil at least once every five years. Sing to her every day. She is wounded. Your voice will bring her healing. She has seen many storms, but her heart is strong. It is etched in the bark of her trees, made of rock and blood, walking and struggle. Her rivers carry the spirits of many lives. Listen to her. She will guide you to the depths of your dreams. Love her. She will give you the breath of her life. But know this. She does not belong to you. She is borrowed. Azania belongs to the future. Twenty rings have formed in the trunk of Azania's heart since you passed, grandfather. There is so much I wish to tell you. You once said all stories flow from other stories. Our story comes from bones of mothers, children, Brothers, uncles, some stolen, others hidden, all waiting in Azania's soil. Many lies needed to be untold. An old bishop broke down when he came face to face with the truth. It was all too heavy reconciling these bones with spirits with families caught between hope and mourning, but it had to be done. This is where we had to begin if there was ever to be any kind of healing, any singing. And it took time for me to trust my voice, grandfather. I spent many winter nights afraid. All I knew was struggle songs. I feared the protea and the springbok would drown in the guilt of Azania's wounds. 
that we would lose them to the legacy of corruption and squatter camps. But one glorious morning, my voice opened up. Poetry and song danced onto soccer fields, rugby fields, World Cups and Madiba magic, and I sang for you, grandfather, a freshly ground tune of healing from Mobrikap to Soweto. And from the singing we began to build, to listen. Azania was thirsty, she wanted to grow, so I planted more trees, opened the doors of learning and found she had much to teach. She taught a young rural boy to carry praise songs all the way across the oceans to NASA, grandfather. Then launch his name into space and write Siabula Lakuza in the stars. She taught Yolanda Mbola to dream fiercely as she lay an elephant to rest at Dudua. She taught us that she belongs to no one person and gave herself to everyone through schools, hot springs, short lifts, books, and international screens. I am an African grandfather, and none dare say I am not. But my greatest joy has been the future. I wish you could see Amashe play. She runs uninhibited, knows nothing of scars and tears and aching thorns. I will teach her about them when the time is right. I will teach her of the fierce baobab tree and her mighty root branches of Sobukwe, Hani, Biko, Mandela. I will teach her of Matera, Josicile, Masikela, Fasi. But I will not allow her to be crippled by the hurt, to hurt so much that she hates. If the life of the Baobab is to truly be honored, let it be to strengthen Amashe's voice. And when my time comes, I will write her a letter. I will leave it on my bedside table. I will encourage her to grow and to learn I will tell her that every child deserves a garden. And that because of her, so young even, Azania continues to be the great love of my life. Thank you guys so much.